Hello, everyone. This is Charles Davis of The God Principles. This video is going to be a reaction video because there's been some things going on. And this is going to be about how do you answer, what do you bring to the table? But first, I want you to, I want to share with you this particular video because it has a lot to do with what I'm about to talk about. Through in the missing persons case of a beauty queen and her Israeli boyfriend, police found the suspected burial site of the missing couple in Tarlac province. For more on this, we are joined by Interior and Local Government Secretary Ben Hur Abelos. Secretary, glad this you could join us. Good afternoon. Use video. Yes, good afternoon, Rika, and to all your viewers. Good afternoon. Hi, thank you, Secretary. Can you tell us more, please, about the discovery of the suspected burial site and what led to this discovery, Secretary? Actually, at first, there was this implementation of search warrant against two AWOL, no, AWOL uh, policemen, Romel Abuzo in Medina and uh, Michael Guia. They call it the uh, Oplan Paglalan Sag. Uh, during this, and they were arrested. What I want you all to uh, notice is that a few days ago, a Filipina beauty queen in one of these provinces went dis disappeared along with her ex-pet boyfriend. And they've been looking for him. And this is the report of what they have found. Policemen were arrested by, by virtue of this, and several ammunitions were found. And then there was a witness who pointed out that there are two cadavers, you know, possibly of, uh, of uh, the two missing uh, um, couple Geneva Sarita E. Lopez and Yitzhak Cohen. And uh, this, uh, they were uh, brought to this uh, area of Astarlac, where indeed uh, there were two cadavers found, one of a female, another one of a male. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most probably, most probably, they are those of Geneva Sarita E. Lopez and Yitzhak Cohen. However, I think the family requested for an NBI autopsy. So right now, we're just awaiting for the autopsy of the NBI. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us, Secretary, please, when was this burial site located? Uh, it's in Barangay, Santa no, uh, Lucia. When, when uh, sir? Was it this morning? Uh, uh, when? When? Yes. Okay, 7 a.m. to 8.45 a.m. Again, can you clarify? What's important about this? What's important about this is I've been seeing some questions on the internet, some videos about that you always hear this question, what do you bring to the table? We always want to talk about those little BS answers. Oh, I'm caring. Uh, I can cook. I got my own job. That's not the answer to that question. That is just not. The real question would be, what happened to you and what have you been doing in your life? Like, for instance, in my case, I would tell you that fine, my mom died when I was four. Uh, I was raised without a mom. My first encounter with a woman was when I was 22, no, not 22, uh, 20. And as a result of that encounter, uh, my very first encounter, I had a venereal disease. Uh, when I went to high school, I didn't have no girlfriend um, because I was so focused on my education and my parents were real strict on me. Uh, my marriage, uh, I had two children. She kept the boy and she aborted the girl. After that, I was with a woman. She was, I was her man on the side while she was with someone else. And that went on for quite a few years. She had a child that she didn't know um, who the father was. See, these are the kind of questions of what you bring to the table. So that when you're sitting up there looking at that person, you actually know what that person has been through. So if I ask somebody and said, hey, look, I'm not sleeping with you 
unless you've had we've had an HIV test, you understand why I have those requirements. Why I want to know what your home life was like because that's going to bring up some red flags. Were were you uh, homeschooled? What type of education do you have? See, these are all the things that you bring to the table. You're trying to set the table, and setting the table is going to be with the good stuff and the bad. And we don't have no problem with the good stuff. We have a problem with the bad stuff. I mean, it's like here in the Philippines, they'll tell you, well, I got six kids. But she won't tell you that. Maybe she will. They were all by different men. So now we're talking about we don't have the same values. It means that, well, fine, I shouldn't put too much into the relationship if I do anything at all. Because right now in my life, the most important thing is my time. And I need to put my time into things that are productive for me. I don't need any go into any more failed relationships. That's just a waste of time and time is my most precious asset that's everybody's most precious asset if a woman has more than one child with the same or different men and she's not with them that means she could be incapable of making a good decision because Having a child is a lifetime decision, and who you have it with is very important. And the decision that you're not with them is a red flag that you may not be capable of making a healthy life decision. Look, I'm going to tell you this story. Before I came to the Philippines, I was working as a security guard. Now, I was with working with three other women, and it was like I would get there at like 7 o'clock in the evening, and they would leave in the middle of the night. There was this woman there. She shared this story. She said when she was young, she was having a great time. She was out there partying. She was running with gang members and things of that nature, and she was having a good time, and she had two sons. And as she reached 30, it finally dawned on her, wait a minute. I've got to raise these two boys. I need to find a husband. She looked around with all the people that she was hanging out with, and she said, well, none of them marriage material. But then she went on and said that there was a guy on her block that had been trying to date her all this time she was doing in this wild period, and she decided to give him a chance. And she liked the relationship. She ended up marrying him, and she's been marrying him, married to him all this time. However, she also said her two sons were bums. And my question was, why didn't you give the guy on the block a chance before you'd have been through all this other drama out there with these other guys? And the other women are in the, the shack, and they're hearing this conversation. Then another one chimes in. She's talking about, well, I'm fixing to bury this guy. I had been saying all along, I said, God, I need to get rid of this guy. I want to get away from him. And she went home and found him dead. And she was talking in the room, talking about, I didn't mean for him to die. I just wanted to move out. And then she started sharing about her life with him. And he was what we call a booster. He was a shoplifter. He would travel around and shoplift, come back, sell the items, and that's how he footed her part, his part of their expenses. And I asked her, why would you be with somebody like that? Well, she, her, her comment was, well, he always treated me good, and he was also a drug addict. And she had been with this guy all these years. She was from Chicago Project. These are the things that women or men bring to the table, and you need to be real honest and upfront about what you've been through. 
because that's going to be the hard part in the relationship. As a matter of fact, here in the Philippines, they say you better get somebody that's going to wipe your ass because one day you might get sick enough and you're going to need somebody to take care of you and hopefully the Filipino that you pick is going to do that because I've heard the horror stories on that end too. You get sick here, they'll walk off and leave you. So what do you bring to the table? I suggest you change that question and ask what happened to you? Because I can tell you once I found out what my ex-wife went through, if I'd have known that beforehand, I would have never touched her at all. And the girlfriend that I dated for all those years, she was a rape victim too. And I met her, she was a cheater up front. I didn't know anything about cheating. She was sleeping with me when she was going through leaving her husband. You see, see, some of these people don't reveal things. They give it to you bit by bit because they already know if you know the truth, you will probably leave them alone. So that's my comment about this. What do you bring to the table? Click like and click share. Also, I'm offering training classes for people that want to learn how to make money online. There's a link in the bio and in the banner of the channel. My name is Charles. Keep coming back. Thank you for watching.